Hello and welcome back and that's right we're carrying on looking at the PS5 SSD upgrade the A-Data Gamix, that's the XPG S70 not the X70 with uh, more streamlined heatsink we will be visiting that very very soon but today I want to make our third video in the series where we're bench testing this SSD on a series of games now we've already transferred the games over this is going to be one video of two we're testing uh, four video, uh, four games per video. As we see, we're going to the M2 NVMe. Uh, I do recommend that you've checked out my other videos on the XPG, where I go into a lot more detail about the specifications, the PlayStation 5 benchmark, read and write activity. And in this video, I'm just going to focus on these games. It's going to be a much shorter video than the others. So I think for now, let's get crack on and get straight into it. These are the uh, games we're featuring in this and the next video. But for now, let's go straight into game number one, which is going to be Spider-Man. Miles Morales. Now, this was a PS5 launch title. Um, I believe it was also on the PS4, the PS5 upgrade, but this is the PS5 version and it's going to be running at the 30 frames per second full picture quality mode. That's high res graphics, that is your ray tracing, that's the highest possible quality there is without taking advantage of 60 frames per second because you can only select one or the other. Now we're going to be comparing it against the internal PS5 SSD. We're obviously not going to include this title sequence because we can hardly think that small FMVs with um, publisher logos are going to be in any way challenging to both this SSD or the internal. But for now, let's crack on and get straight into the world of the game as we talk a little bit about the tests in three, two, one. So this should be pretty quick uh, going straight into this and we're into the world immediately. And again, for those of you that are wondering, I've mentioned this in other videos, but nonetheless, the reason we are not taking advantage of the 60 frames per second mode is because 60 frames per second is far, far more challenging for the internal CPU, GPU and memory. But if we leave it on fidelity mode where we can have the full graphics, that is where the SSD is going to have to really work hard to supply all of those actual graphical assets for this system to take advantage of. So what we're trying to do right now is move as quickly as we can through this city just in order to um, push the graphics card and reveal any problems that it may or may not have. But at the moment, everything seems to be running fine. All the AI are there on screen. I'm seeing no drop in frame rate, no missing textures there. The big tell would be if there's building missing textures in the distance. Anyone that's ever looked at the original uh, Spider-Man for PS4 will know that there were um, kind of draw distance glitches out there. There were some early glitches uh, with that game that kind of revealed how the game loads stuff. But for now, I'm seeing no issues right now at all in this game. It's still running beautifully well. So the next part of the test for Spider-Man Miles Morales, of course, is doing the uh, fast travel so that's what we're going to do now we're going to fast travel to the very top of the map and then from there we're going to see how long it takes to do it and then we're immediately going to hit the ground running in order to see if we can catch out the loading of this game so let's go in in three two one okay that's lovely and quick and we can go straight in and we're not going to give it any time to relax we're just going to go straight in and again, the more astute of you will be keen, obviously, to highlight that a lot of the streets of this game, you reuse assets throughout. So even with fast traveling, there must be a degree of uh, reused assets uh, between regions when you fast travel with only unique stuff built on top of it. But still, nonetheless, it's still running remarkably well there. And again, we can go around and maybe rotate down, going to the sunlight to see if the lighting effects are going to be problematic here again. The internal PS5 recording there was made using the PlayStation's own internal recording mechanism. Consequently, uh, on the right here, we are using uh, a capture card. So that would explain the kind of slight color resolution and noise difference between them. But it doesn't make a difference because I'm viewing this um, in the original quality there. Uh, so don't worry, it doesn't make any jot of a difference. I just thought I would highlight that. Uh, there is no real difference there in resolution from what I'm seeing. But for now, let's come out of this game and go into our second test game, which is Lego Worlds. Lego Worlds is a PS4 title. Uh, and again, it is a game that although it's PS4 architecture and is a little bit older, it has to be said that it does also have quite 
heavy loading. It definitely leans a little bit into the IOPS as well. Uh, what you'll notice is a few games in both this and the video that comes after it where I'm prioritizing big open world sandbox games that have an over-reliant on uh, loading the big assets first and then fully populate with a smaller kind of data afterwards. And that is where we really tell the men from the boys in terms of these SSDs. So this game, we're gonna be going into the creative mode. And then from that creative mode, we're just gonna use all the biomes, that's all of the assets in the game, uh, and create it from scratch in the sandbox environment. And then make sure that the game's not gonna suffer any clipping, any stuttering, uh, that there's no uh, texture pop, there's no, none of the um, kind of top layer of anything isn't loading in correctly as the game swaps out high and low profile assets. And of course, how um, uh, objects are obviously destroyed from the memory to free up room for other stuff is stuff we're gonna keep an eye on. Obviously this is on a much more microcosm level, but nonetheless, it's gonna be interesting to see both how well the game runs compared to the internal SSD and of course, how quickly the game loads. Because you can already tell during all of this dialogue, this is not a fast game to load. But for now, let's make our way back onto that title screen, go into the sandbox mode. From there, we're gonna create a brand new world. This brand new world is gonna be made up of the largest surface area. And we're going to include all of the elements that are open to you. We're gonna create it there, we're gonna chuck them all in. The game will randomly chuck us into an area of the map, but we're not gonna pay that too much heed. And we're just gonna go straight in, and we load it in three, two, one. What am I saying? I've got to do it here. Let's try that again. Three, two, one. So again, I've mentioned it in other videos, but I'll say it again. This game really does feel like a cross between Minecraft and No Man's Sky. The whole lots of worlds. And if you do travel from world to world, there is kind of a, a silent loading time and the game tries to do a kind of in-game flight. It's not the same as No Man's Sky, but it's still not too shabby. Um, so as we make our way into this world here, again, most of the loading has taken place, but of course you guys can see how this compares against that internal SSD all the way through. So I can only see what's happening with the XPG there, but <clears throat> in the post edit, it will all become abundantly clear. And this SSD is also featured in a big four way comparison coming very, very soon. But we're making our way into the ground level there. The first thing we're gonna do is generate a flight vehicle immediately because what we want to do is quickly force the game to have to loading some of those other outside world assets. So again, we'll go over the cargo plane just for the hell of it. We're just gonna jump straight on in and we're going to explore this environment. So again, the first thing you may notice if we the camera's out as far as it can go is the world is creating a lot of these assets as we go. That's kind of built into how this game is made. Also, on top of that, as we can make our way around the world, it's worth highlighting that at any time we can just go straight onto the inside view and double check that the game is loading in close up uh, visual assets as well. We're making our way to the next area. But yeah, ultimately, it does seemingly run quite well. I know the plane that we're utilizing here is painfully slow. Bad news, they all are. This game was originally designed, I believe, uh, for either the Wii U or the, or the Switch. Consequently, you can see around us, look behind us as assets are being kind of taken out of the box of play and new assets are being introduced. That's nothing we can do about that and that's no limitation of the SSD itself. But if we bring this down to the ground level, so let's bring that out of there. And what we'll do is we'll quickly introduce a, a random object, uh, like a building or something that we can go into. And then from there, we can then double check that the game is gonna be okay to create those in-world assets. So let's go ahead and create the town hall, chuck that down there, and the game is gonna go ahead and create that. So what we're gonna be looking to do here is double check that the game has still done a good job of creating those assets, because it is technically loading this all in, in the creative sense of this game. But what we wanna do is head straight into the game, head into any kind of building environment here, and double check that all of the close up assets are still working. The lighting effects are still working. The passage of light as well, it's all running fine. And again, lovely stuff there with the game running exactly how I would expect it to. I mean, again, can't fault it. It's doing exactly what I would expect. And for now, I think we can come out of here and make our way into our third game, which is Deathloop. 
Okay, so we're logging into Deathloop here, and again, we've skipped the whole intro sequence there. We're just going to get straight to the meat and veg on this video. We're going to skip forward, and again, we're going to make our way straight into the single player campaign. As you can see, the game is doing all of the logging into the network services. That's why we never include all of the online services here. We're just going to go straight into the um, single player campaign there. It's load straight into Deathloop here, and again, what we're looking at here is low to um, high textures as we swap in and out and get in close proximity ensuring the frame rate doesn't drop and just kind of pushing through the game as quickly as we can to make sure that the ssd is supplying all of that information as quickly as possible so let's go in in three two one it's worth highlighting we're only counting the loading bar here that you can see on screen between these two ssds simply because it's only a fair way to do it because the opening cinematic there doesn't really always remain the same so it's not fair to measure them against one another but what we're doing is we're going to make our way straight into the game and go as quick as possible and again what we're doing is we want to get the game to introduce uh, random assets as quickly as possible again i apologize for my proximity uh, to the microphone but there's not a lot i can do about that um, so you will hear the controller from time to time in this video but nonetheless let's carry on moving forward as quickly as we can again we've got a large area of enemies there so we can go ahead and get the game to um, wake up a little bit there and again what we want to do is get some of those close-up animations sorted because they're the ones that show off uh, the textures if it is going to introduce low textures there so they're the ones that are going to be the problematic ones but we died there, so once again we will immediately respawn, so we can carry on moving forward again. And again, all we're doing is we want to make sure that we carry on forward as quickly as we can. But again, I'm feeling no problems whatsoever here. All of the text, all of the uh, resources are all nice and sharp there. We're not seeing anything that I would consider kind of a potential negatively impacting area of what we're doing and for now everything's loading beautifully i think if we now just peg it through the remainder of the area try and get the game to work a little bit harder once again just to see if there's anything that we're missing here right now but it looks more and more like this is going to be absolutely fine so let's go ahead and open fire on these poor devils this guy no no you didn't get me but i think for now nothing here is suggesting to me like we're having difficulty in what we're seeing here so let's come out of this game and make our way into our fourth and final game call of duty warzone for those aren't aware call of duty warzone is uh, an exclusively online experience at least as far as running the game you can't have warzone running without internet connectivity so what you need to do in order to um, have more of a valid test here between the internal ps5 ssd and here on the xpg gamex is we have the ssds both running uh one of the training sessions that's the battle royale with nothing but bots this will allow us to um, compare these two ssds quite evenly and uh the ssd performance quite evenly in the best possible way we can on this game which let's face it is still a very popular title uh, for both ps4 and ps5 um, again we'll be looking at those textures that frame rate because again warzone has an, a lovely high frame rate all the way through on ps5 so we'll be looking at all of that and of course how quickly it loads into the map and the opening cinematic and the opening pre-rendered cut scenes but as you can tell because all that online connectivity there it's a real nightmare trying to get anything done and we're going to have to get that update installed so let's get that done right so we finally made our way to the title screen of one of the slowest loading games i've ever played in my life so let's go in and compare these two in three two one okay we're already making our way into the game again this is one of those games that because even though it came out on the previous generation of consoles it has seen substantial uh, updates throughout its life again because it's a game as a service um it's a game that gets heavier and heavier with every update. But for now, we're making our way into it. There we go. There's the pre-rendered cutscene at the beginning. There's our in-game graphics there. It isn't an FMV that we're watching here. 
and now the game will throw us in while the game is still doing some kind of secret background loading right now. So again, we'll rotate the camera a little bit. We're not going to see much to go on with Rahia because the game is still loading in those assets gradually. If you look very, if you look just on the edges of the camera there while I'm rotating it there, you'll see that a lot of the world assets just slowly pop in. We've noticed that with both the internal PS5 SSD and all of these SSD upgrades that we've used thus far. But what we're going to do is jump out in a moment and then from there we're going to bench test this final game for this SSD. Let's head down to the ground level and again what we're looking to do right now is just try to get, um, just push the game as much as we can to get a bunch of activity. So let's carry on moving forward and again we're not going to worry too much about where we land because the AI is weirdly forgiving. I've mentioned this in other videos but I must 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 mention it again when I'm pressing these buttons there is the tiniest delay on what I'm pressing here consequently um, it will I, when I press a button it's not going to be in sync with what I see on screen so it's real hard to play a game like this when there's that much of a delay particularly when you're getting pursued by this guy who is designed to just be a real annoyance there so again I've seen that absolutely fine. We're seeing no slowdown, so let's carry on making our way through the area. So a slight drop in frame rate there, but I think a lot of that was simply because of like the services because there is still online connectivity on this update. But again, it's something to keep an eye on if it happens again. Again, I am going to be incredibly loose about how I'm playing this game because I appreciate this is bots and they're not exactly going to end the world for me here, but still nonetheless. Let's carry on moving forward. I'm going to just move nice and quickly through the game. And again, all we're looking at here is just trying to push the game as much as we can. And I think for now, let's get ourselves to a nice high, high vantage point. And then from there, we can see if the game's having any difficulty with those additional assets. Obviously, when I go up high, I'm going to make myself a great big target there. But nonetheless, I'm not seeing any issues there in terms of what we're seeing on screen. Everything's seemingly running at that lovely speed there. Oh, that would have been nice. Okay, so let's end this by grabbing that vehicle and having a quick drive around. Let's open up some pace um, and then see if that is going to affect anything here. As we move around through the terrain of the game. But for now, it seems like it's running absolutely fine to me here at least. And I think we can carry on and make our way back onto the PlayStation's own menu internally in just a moment as we push through just to sort of summarise what we've seen today and whether this SSD is worthy of your time, your data and of course your money. Let's come out there. But for now, I've got to say, as always, the XPG has continued to impress me as an SSD upgrade for the PS5. Um, it's probably one of the more affordable options out there if you're looking for one with a heatsink attached. I think the durability could perhaps be a pinch higher, but that's not going to be a huge concern to PS5 gamers. Uh, performance is great. I've got to say, whether you're using this for a PC, and we tested it in our PC benchmarks, or if you're looking at it as a PS5 upgrade, you're not going to regret any of the performance we've seen thus far. And in every PS5 title we have tested, it has always done very very well indeed so i will continue to recommend this and of course soon we will have the x70 blade or the s70 blade even uh brought onto the channel shortly where we will be looking at that on a myriad of playstation 5 titles and of course how it compares against this version here and see if there is any advantage of one or the other in the system because if those aren't aware the gamex once you install it in the ps5 you can't use the plate the heat sink of the gamex x70 um, the one that we're using here is actually taller than the M2 bay of the PlayStation 5. Consequently, you can't put the lid back on and it opens up airflow. And that negative pressure, we're still not 100% how good or bad that can be. So again, once we have the blade version and comparing them together, we'll get a better understanding of that. But for now, if you've enjoyed this video, click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and makes every video better than the last. If you want to learn more about this SSD or other PS5 upgrades before you 
pull the pin and get one yourself, to, uh, do click subscribe and the bell to be notified. And otherwise, use the links in the description to get hold of your SSD for your PS5 and help support this service and tutorials And as we test more for other people. It helps keep these videos running. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.